All right, so we're going to do a couple of examples with computing line integrals. We've got the first one up on the board here, ready to go. Um, so we've got, remember the, the setup here is we want to compute the integral of some vector field f along some curve c. And the way we do this is we first come up with a parameterization of our curve if one is not already given. And we use the parameterization to evaluate the integral. So the way we do that is, so the parameterization defines x, y, and z as functions of t. Um, your vector field f is given by functions p, q, r. They all depend on x, y, z. So plugging in the parameterization turns p, q, and r into functions of t via composition, right? So your vector field depends on t. You take the dot product of this vector with the tangent vector to the curve, and you integrate, right? So the picture looks something like this. You've got your curve in space. Um, we can think of, if you want to think of this as a vector-valued function, then it points, it's the position vector for a point on the curve. Our prime is the tangent vector to the curve. And the vector field f, of course, it could, be, it could be pointing in any particular direction at any point along the curve. And what you're interested in is how much of the vector field is pointing in the direction of the curve. So what's the component of this vector field? in the direction of the curve. So we do that by computing the dot product with our prime. Um, the motivation here is this, this concept of work coming from physics, that we want to compute the work done by a force as it moves an object along some path. That's the idea that you're thinking of here. Uh, OK, so that's the, the general idea. I've drawn the vectors at one point. But of course, as you move this point along the curve, um, well, the two vectors here in, in pink are constrained to always kind of, well, this vector follows the curve. The tangent vector must remain tangent to the curve. This yellow vector could go anywhere. Right? It depends on how this vector field is defined. The direction doesn't have anything to do with the direction of the curve necessarily. But the value of the integral, of course, is going to depend on how much of this vector points in the direction of the curve at any given point. All right. So here's an example. We've got a vector field f, right? So we've got our components. So this is my, this is p, this is q, this is r. And we've got two line segments. So the first thing we need to do is we need to parameterize these line segments, right? So we need to come up with two parameterizations. So we might say, OK, so we'll call the first one r1 r1 of t. And now sometimes you can, you can eyeball these. You might be able to guess this one. You might be able to say, well, look, um, x stays constant at 1 the whole time. And y goes from 0 to 2. z goes from 0 to 3. So if we did 2t and 3t with t between 0 and 1, that's going to do the job, right? That's going to start at 1, 0, 0. It's going to end at 1, 2, 3. R2, parameterizing the second curve. Uh, you might find it's a little bit trickier here. If, you, if you're not sure how to just kind of come up with the, uh, with the parameterization off the cuff, there is one trick that always works, which is that you're going to do uh, t times the position vector that you want to end up at. So t times 3, 2, 1. And then we do 1 minus t times the position vector for where we want to, where we want to start. So 1, 2, 3. Okay? You can see that this is going to, when t is equal to 0, we're at the point 1, 2, 3. When t is equal to 1, we're at the point 3, 2, 1, right? It does the job. Um, if you want to simplify this, what do we get if we simplify? We're going to get, um, in the first component, 3t minus t. So 1 minus t plus 3t. So we get 1 plus 2t. Um, in the middle, we have 2t minus 2t plus 2, right? The middle stays constant at 2, right? We see that here, right? The y-coordinate doesn't change. And then we have 3 minus 3t plus t. So we have uh, 3 minus 2t. t 
t between 0 and 1. Okay? And you can check that that does the job, right? It begins, it's clearly the parameterization of a line because all three functions are linear. It begins at 1, 2, 3, it ends at 3, 2, 1, so this is going to be, this is going to be what we want. Okay, so now we've got, to, uh, we've got to use the definition here to set things up, so we want to parameterize our curve. So, switch to blue. How's that going to look? Well, along C1, we have that f of r of t. So we're going to set x equal to 1, y equals 3t, z, or sorry, y equals 2t, z equals 3t. We plug that in. So we're going to have, so x is 1, and then this is going to be 2t times 3t, so that's going to be 6t squared. In the middle, we just have 3 times z, so 3 times 3t, 9t. And then we have 2 times 1 times 2t, so that's going to be 4t. And we know that our prime of t, r1, is just going to be, well, it's 0, right? 0, 2, 3. So that means that the integral along C1 of f dot dr is the integral from 0 to 1. Of, well, we've got to do the dot product, right? So 0 times 1, 2 times 9t, so 18t, and then 3 times 4t. So 18t plus 12t, so once you work out the dot product, 30t, integrate with respect to t, and that's going to come out to a value of 15. Not so bad. For C2, we have that F evaluated along R2 is going to be, okay, so this time we've got to use, we've got to use R2, which is sitting here. So X squared, it's going to be a little bit more, you know, a little bit more work here, right? So X squared, we square 1 plus 2t. Um, 1 plus 4t plus 4t squared. Okay. Um, that's x squared. Okay. Uh, plus yz. So we still have to do uh, y, which is 2 times z. So 2 times 3 is 6. Um, 2 times, so minus 4t. Okay, so there's yz. Okay, we move on to q. q is just 3z, so that's not so bad. 3 times 3 is 9, minus 6t. And then finally, 2 times x times y. So y is just 2, so this is 2 times 2 times x, so 4 times x, so 4 plus 8t. Okay. And by the way, you might notice that uh, there's a convenient cancellation here. Those 4t's cancel. 7 plus 4t squared um, for that. Our 2 prime, so the tangent vector, is going to be 2, 0, because the y component is constant, and then minus 2. So we're going to get that the integral along C2 is the integral from 0 to 1. And we're going to have what? 2 times, what do we have here for the x component? We've got 
1 plus 6, so this is 7 plus 4t squared. Okay, that's my p times 2, so 14 plus 8t squared. All right. Um, we don't get a contribution from q from the y component because we're dotting with 0, right, times 0. And then we have minus 4 times minus 2, so minus 8 minus 16t. Okay. So we work that out. So 14 minus 8 is, uh, is 6. Integrating 6 from 0 to 1 just gives me 6. Uh, the 8t squared, that's going to give me 8 over 3. And then finally, the minus 16t, that's going to give me minus 8. So I have 8 thirds minus 2, I get 2 thirds for the second integral. All right, so we've computed those two separately. Finally, you want this integral here. You want the integral of c. So the, the idea here is that this particular curve, if you think about what it does, it starts at 1, 0, 0. So it starts here, and it's going to go, let's just draw it over here. So you're starting at one point. You're going to another, so you're going there, right? And then you're going from 1, 2, 3. You're going to go to 3, 2, 1. So you're going to do something like that and you get your C2, right? Um, the rule for evaluating line integrals along curves like this, so this notation here means you join the two curves together, like in the picture, that's what the plus means. So this is an example of a piecewise smooth curve with two parts. We're gonna go through this terminology in another video. Um, the, the rule is quite simple. It's exactly what you might expect. You're going to do this and then this, and you want the, you want the total you just add them up, right? So it's the integral along C1 plus the integral along C2. And so that's going to be uh, 15 plus 2 thirds. So I get, what's that going to be? 47 over 3 for my integral. Okay, we'll do one more example. Um, then we're going to talk a little bit about properties of curves, properties of integrals, before we get into the fundamental theorem.